What up, world? It's your boy Jeff, aka Cool Boy Jeff, right here. This only place you can find a way was a wave 804. And I got my dog that came all the way from Norfolk that came to the well to do an interview with your boy. So I ain't gonna say too much. I'm gonna let my dog go ahead and do it. Say his name, bro. Go ahead and do you. What's good? What's good, world? Boss Money. Yeah, yeah. Shit, go look me up, bro. YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify. Don't even matter. All hits. Mm -hmm. Goddamn. Instagram, Boss.Money. Anybody trying to do a feat, get at me. What's up, man? You got a lot of stuff going on for yourself. You've been making music for a little while, too. So I'm going to go ahead and let him explain his story. If you can, man, let everybody know who you is, man, and uh, where you from and what you've been doing for the last couple of years. Shit, I'm from Prince George, VA. Okay. A lot of people don't know what Prince George is. We right in the middle yeah, of yeah. Peterborough, Hopewell. Yeah. Anybody don't know. Shit, right now, just dropped the EP, Cold Money. Make sure you go get that. Working on my new single, Serving. Shit, got features with Lil Papa, Hurricane Wisdom. Go back to my first mixtape. I got the answers out right now. Mm -hmm. All hits, no skips. Shit, we just what we doing. Man, just tell me about your upbringing, man. Like, what kind of got you invested in in, um, in making music? Was it, you know, the uh, the music that was before you, or was it just in the meantime? Like, how did that work for you? Well, shit. At first, I ain't really even want to touch the music. Like, I of course, you know, you when you young and whatnot, you be with your friends and stuff. Y'all be rapping the beats and stuff, see so y'all can put together. Mm -hmm. But then, for real, for real, one time it was when COVID hit. And my homeboy, Lorenco, shout out Lorenco, he hit me up and was like, hey, bro, like, come to the stool. Woody whoop. So I'm sitting here like, man, I, I can't even rap for real, bro. Like, I ain't trying to be on all that. But then he was all like, nah, bro, come on. Like, let's just let's see what we can do. We'll see what we can come up with. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right. So went to the stool, bro. We was up in my homeboy's attic, bro. We had the speakers, the little mic, everything set mm -hmm. up. And I was like, fuck it. We just hopped on the mic, started going. And, and then they was fucking with the shit. And I was like, damn, so... Started playing it with some other people, and they was like, bro, that shit, that shit tough, bro. Like, keep on going. Keep yeah. on going with that shit. So I was like, well, that's how I go. Yeah. What was the name of that first joint, man? Shit. I honestly don't remember the first song I ever made. I don't remember the name of that joint. But the first song I ever put out, that shit named Go. Mm -hmm. Featuring me and me and my boy Floyd. Uh-huh. You have to go tap into that, too. Okay. So after that, man, you started getting the recognition from your peers. And from there, you started taking more seriously. So what was the next step for you and why? Well, shit, next step for me was, shit, performing. Like, I was like, I had a, first I started out just making music with my friends and shit like that. Mm -hmm. Niggas started moving around and whatnot, so I started going to stool on my own. Then I got the tape going. After the tape, I was like, shit, I got to go ahead and start performing. Mm -hmm. So I started looking at, like, some stuff around. And then one of my homeboys, he a DJ. He a DJ, like, shit, shout out Buhancho. He came to me and was like, hey, um, shout to hit me talking about this, uh, this little QC thing going on in Richmond. And he was like, bro, you see what that's on. So shit, I saw about the the joint in Richmond. After that, like I was one of the winners of the show. So I mm -hmm. went on and performed in Fayetteville, went on and performed in Atlanta, started turning up a little bit. Uh -huh. And that was, shit, that was the next step for me. What is it, QC official? Mr. Mr. Two official? Yeah. I, think that's a, I think that's his name. But uh, he had came to the uh, main stage joint. That's, that's where he met all the artists. And I see that you had one that joint too. So now that you had got the chance to travel, how big is it as an artist that you have to travel? Because a lot of people, they, you know, where I'm at, this and this. But most of the time, you really never know who you are until you go out of state and you see the competition that's around you. So by your opinion, what would be that for you? Well, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I ain't really look at it as competition for real, for real. It was just like, but you got to travel. You got to get your name out there. Especially because, I mean, I don't know about other artists, but just like me personally, I could say like a lot of times people in your city don't really not going to support you like that. They ain't support you till you, like you got to go somewhere else and start popping and then come back to your shit. And I like, oh, yeah, hey, I know that nigga. You put up, he popping, we'll do, we'll do, we'll. Like, even, though they, even though that's that's really just kind of how it be, but you definitely got to travel like, because a lot of times you never know what city you might go to. They might be fucking with your shit way, like mm -hmm. real hard, like. Like, I don't know. That's kind of how it went for me when I first performed at Atlanta. I was like, oh, damn, like, niggas really fuck with me. Niggas trying to talk to me, mm -hmm. handing me their cards, like, and I asked for my numbers and shit like that. Like, I mean, I still get love out here, too, but way more love in other states. You never know. Right. You definitely get way more love for people who don't know you than, than the people who do. Because even, like, starting out, I seen, um, what's his name, Nardo Wick. He asked his family, you know, saying donating $100, and only two people did it, and he only looked out for those two people, which I feel like, should be straight because they took care of him when he when he was just starting out. But as far as you traveling, you networking, and you meeting other people, when you got down there, was it a very uncomfortable feeling, or was you kind of like in focus mode, like 
yeah, this is where I need to be. Uh, yeah, I was, I, I was pretty focused. I was hyped. Uh -huh. I was like, shit, I'm ready to get on this stage. I remember, I remember going up to the lady and telling her my name, and I was like, hey, like, when am I going up? Like, mm -hmm. like you know, I was ready. I was trying to be one of the first few up there, and I was. I was like the second, third to go. And I was like, yeah, I was just ready for real, for real. I ain't mm -hmm. gonna say I won't scare. I won't scare. It's where I wanted to be. It's what I want. So mm -hmm. I gotta go get it. We'll bring it back to Virginia, right? So you know, a lot of us that's from VA. You know what I'm saying? We get in, uh, get stuck into our area codes. You know, I'm from the 804. You from the 804. But, you know, people from the 75, people from the 5, 540, 434, whatever. Now, do you think that as a collective, that if people stop thinking about the area codes or where they're from, like, as Virginia as a whole, we could take things over? Or does that kind of just go off of, like, where people come from? They just want to rep because that's just basically where they're from for real. Uh, yeah. I feel like that's what, probably what it is. It's kind of it's kind of just like you might not fuck with where you're from, but you still kind of got that sense of loyalty to it because mm -hmm. it did kind of make you who you are. Mm -hmm. So, it's, so I mean, you know, sometimes, yeah, that's really how it be. It's like, yeah, you know, it's just hating your city, but at the end of the day, that's your city like. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you got to rep it. You got to stand on it. Mm -hmm. I hear that, bro. So and then, too, as uh, being a rapper, you know, um, I think Boosie and Tony Ayo, when they spoke about it on Vlad TV and uh, – I want to say expert opinion, shout out to Math Hoffer too, where he's basically saying like being a rapper is the most dangerous job there is. Now, as far as you, how the way you carry yourself, I know there's a way that you move, you know what I'm saying? But what is the particular mindset, you know what I'm saying? Because you are an artist and you do make music. But as far as protecting yourself and getting back to the folks who, you know, who support you, that care about you, how hard are you on yourself to make sure that that is always going to happen. Like, hey, I'm going to make it home regardless. For sure. And that's, that's, that's what will be on my mind. I mm -hmm. got to make it home type shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? I always make sure I always know, like, my surroundings. I don't be going nowhere alone for real. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of ten, niggas got it on them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it just is what it is. Like, and before every show, I call my mama and I pray, I pray with her mm -hmm. every single time. I know she praying for me and my niggas with me. Shit. And just move a certain way. I, you know, don't, don't stay... You know, don't always have your location out there. Don't be in one place too long, you know. Just keep it going. Yeah, as far as uh, going back into that, why do you think that most people want to go after a rapper so much instead of, like, somebody else who's in a um, professional business or a professional title? It's almost like artists is always the the ones that get caught in the situation. Is it because of the flashiness or, you know, the jealousy? In your opinion, what would be that, man? Sometimes, sometimes jealousy, sometimes envy, and sometimes niggas just dead ass be broke. Like, they see you in nice ass chain, they need some bread, like, shit, I'm just going to go ahead and take his shit type shit. Like, right. don't nobody want to work no more. Anybody trying to work no goddamn nine to five, bro? <laughs> mm -hmm. Niggas just, niggas just jug, they rob, like, right. you know what I'm saying? That's, that's why you got to move a certain way. Mm -hmm. That's, that's why I think it is most of the time. Right. Right. So, it's now seeing it as it's been more... Uh, ra uh, death of rappers in the past, in the what three years going before then, it wasn't that much. But do you think it could be something that most rappers can control as far as like what's being said, you know, how it's being said? Because also, the level of disrespect to sometimes be at an all time high. So, as an artist yourself, what do you have to be mindful of, like when you say certain things or records or when you do certain things? Shit. <coughs> Honestly, I don't even really be worried about that shit, for real. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it how I want to say it, for real. They take it one way, they take it that way. Everybody going to take shit different ways. Ain't no way to please everybody, for real, for real. So you might as well just say what you want to say. Say what's on your mind. That's I don't really be nah. I don't, and then, and then they, somebody got something to say about it, bro. It's like, all right. Like, I don't give a fuck. I don't be entertaining that shit. Uh -huh. Okay. All right, so now back to your music. What has now been the most... <clears throat> Improving, improvable state for you as an artist that you can look at now. Okay, I got into a certain level versus how I was like a year ago, two years ago. What would that be for you, and why? Um, I mean, it's just like it's just really consistency. Like the more, like the more times. I mean, it's really just kind of practice, I guess. Just mm. keep hop on different beats and keep going, keep going. Like you know, being in the studio, it's mm. kind of just like practicing for us for a sport, like. Mm -hmm. You gotta keep doing it. Though. That's the only way to get better. You All gotta right. put the time in. Repetition. Exactly. Repetition. I respect it. 
Finding right. your finding your level of auto tune you like, finding like how you like to flow. Mm -hmm. You like to go fast, you like to go slow, you like to mm -hmm. harmonize, like you just gotta kinda find it. Mm -hmm. You gotta find your flow. I got you. Now, as far as the music that you have made, what would be what is your favorite songs? And what about those songs make you like actually feel like okay, like it's getting me closer to where where I'm trying to be? Shit, my favorite songs Shit, I don't know, bro. I like all of them, but mm -hmm. uh, shit, my newest, my newest single called "Rain." Mm -hmm. Definitely go tap into "Rain." I like that joint because it was kind of like it was just a time in my life, and I was like, really, that whole tape, the whole cold money tape, it was like the closing of a chapter for me. Okay, so like, I really like all them songs. Uh, shit, I like I like my first mixtape too. Like mm -hmm. all them Jones hard, bro. I don't know. It's mm -hmm. hard to pick my favorite. But if I, all right, rain out my window. Shit, take over the block. Keep sleeping, nigga. Huh, nigga? What? Yeah, all them Jones, bro. <laughs> okay. So what do you feel like is like the most slept on project that people didn't really like? They listened to it, but they ain't really like listen to it. Listen to it. Like, that joint, like, for real, you know it's snap, but when people listen to it, it's like, ah, oh, well, I like this better than the other joint. <laughs> I would say my newest EP. I mean, it only been out It only been out for, like, a, for like two weeks. Yeah, so yeah. So I still got to kind of yeah, see how it does. Yeah, you still got to get that joint time. Yeah, I got to get that joint some time. But I do feel like people really got to, like, listen to it. Right, listen to what I'm saying. Because I know, I know people can relate to it, mm -hmm. for sure. And coming from yourself, what is something about that album that people can relate to? Shit, I mean, I feel like everybody got that one. Everybody got that one person. Everybody got that one person that, like, they love toxic shit they know they can't be with. Mm. Sound like some toxic shit there, sir. It is. But <laughs> everybody got that one, bro. It, 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 it's just something about them. It is something about them. <laughs> mm -hmm. But you do move on. Like, you still, you know, you move on type shit. But right. it's still be in the back of your mind sometimes. Right. I know the guys can vouch on this, like they feel the same way, I guess. For sure. For sure. <laughs> feel that shit. So, then too, you do make the music for the guys and whatnot, you know what I'm saying, for the streets. Or um, what about the females, man? Something that can, that can be commercially played that you know for a fact, like, okay, if, let's say for instance, I use an example, like 106.5, the beat was like, yo, we need a song that we can be able to put on the radio. You know what I'm saying? What would that joint be? I say rain. I would say rain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like rain one of the ones, bro. Mm -hmm. For sure. Okay. Uh, um, I say I say out my window. Oh, okay. I said they could lay down my window. Oh, said too much. They could lay to said too much. Uh huh. Yeah, these, a good amount of them. yeah, these these joints I gotta check out. Oh yeah, too. lonely. Yeah, lonely. I'm gonna check these joints out. Let's see, I'm trying to make sure like when we hear these joints, like I don't know if you ever uh. Be posting your joints on like TikTok and stuff like that, cause that's mm -hmm. how I start, like mainly people be going viral like hell. Yeah. Like bro, like yeah, I just gotta listen to it, bro. It may pop out, may gotta make a TikTok to that shit, bro. Shit, may try to get my old ex joint back. I'm just playing. <laughs> this ain't nothing but just an interview. I was going along with go along. But anywho, as far as your music, bro, where have you really pride yourself when it comes to where like where you've been? to where you going because i know you see the vision i know you got the guys around you hell they here with you to support you you know what i'm saying as far as your endeavors and have a have a way that you carry it but they there behind you 110 percent. but as far as seeing yourself in the next couple of years what would that be bro next couple of years mm -hmm. i honestly plan on being shit. i'm either gonna be i'm mm, I think I'm gonna be signed in a couple of years for real. Okay, you signing? I think I'm gonna be signed in a couple of years. Okay. No Cause doubt. right now you're independent, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so is there like a label right now or is y'all just doing you just doing you right now? No, I'm just doing me. Okay. It ain't no label. Okay. It ain't no like particular label. Mm -hmm. you no, know, I don't really care about none of that. I just want you know what I'm saying, I'm serious about my shit, so I just want somebody to take me serious too. I feel that. I feel that. Now, what would a talk be in for you to sign? Like, what would there be a number or what type of deal it would be, you know what I'm saying, if you sign on, you know, you get a partnership. 
plus you get the this and this and this, what would it be for you, bro? Because I know you see a lot of artists go through these situations and talk about they, they deals, they contracts. How would you want that joint to be set up for you, for you to sign? Shit. Nah, 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 nah. I ain't, I ain't gonna say what I ain't gonna say what I need, bro. I ain't gonna say, <coughs> I, ain't, I ain't gonna say what I want. I'm gonna just wait and see. Okay. We just gonna wait and see what they say. Whoever come with the best. I ain't gonna say what it is. Mm-hmm. I mean, but you already set up and plan like you already know what you're gonna do, though, right? For sure. Okay, cool. Always think about it, plan it. Mm-hmm. That's all right. All right. So I'm trying to think too. Who uh, you ever had anybody in mind that you seen as a, as a youngin or somebody you looked at like? I, I would I would sign with this particular person or this label or this group whatever, you know was there ever something like that or no? Nah, nobody in particular, bro. Nah, not in particular. No. Nah. Okay, cool. All right. So now you you got the guys with you, and it's also again it's dope that they showed up and they um support you what you got going on. As far as loyalty, how do you go about that? Because you know everybody got their own problems, they got their own journey. But as far as like y'all y'all being the team, and I'm pretty sure y'all seen um, I think it was Big Boogie. He had a a show with somebody, and I uh, can't call who what the show was, but he was saying like, "Yo, if you're going through something, let me know too." You know what I'm saying? Like, talk to me, bro. If you're going through this, like, let me know. Like, how is that with you when it comes to loyalty? And it's like, you know, this being you, you know what I'm saying? Because you ain't you ain't gotta be funny to get attention or do some wild shit. You could just be up like, "Yo, bro, I'm going through this." But how does that work with you and your your thing? For sure. Loyalty, everything to me, for real. Mm-hmm. Everything. But I understand people got lives. You know what I'm saying? They're not always going to be able to be there. You know, niggas got jobs, niggas got kids, niggas got shit going on. Right. I was like, back in the day, they do be there when I need them, though, if I pick up that phone and call them, I know they're going to be there. Right. And they're always there to support. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, loyalty is big for me. It's everything to me. Y'all was able, like, I, I like how y'all all in sync. You know, everybody know, like, what's going on. And then it's like too. Everybody know what position they play. Like it's no, no. I'm thinking this in my head, but I know I know what's going on type shit. But as far as what y'all got going on, like everybody was cool. Walked to the house, you know. what I said my man gave the house floor a compliment and shit. You know, what I'm saying that shit was cool. But also too, man, it's like I really, I really fuck with that because you know, what I'm saying loyalty is a big thing with me. I don't really have too many people around me, but the ones who I do. I do fuck with is for a reason. Like, I don't need a hundred. As long as I got two or three, we could take over for real, for real. But that's beside the point. Anywho, now that we about to come up to December, you got anything that's coming up for real, for real? Ah, uh, shit. Yeah, I got my new single, Serving. Okay. That joint gonna be dropping, like, beginning of the new year. You got anybody that you want to work with, bro, that you want to collab with? Anybody in mind? It's a lot of people I fuck with for real, mm-hmm. but like I want to collab with right now. I'm not sure, mm-hmm. but it's a lot of niggas I fuck with. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Anything that uh, the wave it'll fuck and uh, contribute. I mean, shit. Shout me out sometime. Repost. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just shit. Tap in. Listen. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm Spread the word. Hey, yeah, I'm definitely be tapped in, bro. I appreciate y'all guys, man, for definitely pulling up for one person to support me, and then for now a person to actually support support. It's the first time you said that you met me, you know, so I gave you a business card at the QC event. Yeah. So now that we can be able to build a relationship, fellas been to the crib, been to the land, ain't nothing to, ain't nothing to it but to do it, bro, and support each other. Because we all got that same goal. We trying to make it, take care of our folks and get the, you know, I don't know about y'all, but I'm trying to make some moves, bro. You know? Anywho, let everybody know where they could be able to follow you at, man, on all social media platforms, music platforms, YouTube. Let everybody know what's going on. Yeah. At me on the gram at Voss dot money V O S S dot money. Mm-hmm. Shit, Voss money on Apple Music, Spotify, really anywhere. <laughs> shit, just tap in. Like you find it anywhere, just tap in. I mean, oh, definitely, definitely follow my Instagram. Got some shit. Mm-hmm. Got some snippets coming out. Got some new shit. I'm about to do some giveaways and shit. Definitely tap in. All right. Make sure you support my boy and uh, shout out to the guys who that's here as well, man. I appreciate y'all for coming and pulling up as well. And, uh, Real cool, man. I appreciate y'all. Sure. Well, other than sure. that, man, it's your boy Jeff. Cool boy Jeff, the Wave 804. Make sure y'all tap in. It's the Wave, man.